Hey, what's up? I am Ara, aka I Eat Zebra, and welcome back to the channel. The old gods and the new have blessed us with some new updates for House of the Dragon, the prequel series to HBO's hit show Game of Thrones. With us being just about a month away from the August 21st premiere, expect to see more updates coming soon in a lot of press. We got a lot to cover from the latest Entertainment Weekly exclusive, so I'm going to break this into two segments. First, going over the latest cast photos and stills. Second, going over what I'm most excited to see from the series based on the cast interviews. So let's get to it. I figured the best way to cover the photos is by what I assume to be the chronological order of events, starting with my favorite photo so far, which we can assume is the Great Council of 101. So in this photo, going from left to right, we see Prince Viserys, his wife, Ama Aaron, who is clearly pregnant. I don't believe she is carrying Rhaenyra just based on the time period. It's probably another sibling that unfortunately isn't going to make it. They are also first cousins, which I'm um, ill. But anyways, the High Septum, I don't believe this is Septum Barth because he is dead by this point, but they might be able to retcon that. So we'll see. In the middle, we have King Jaehaerys I, the old king. Next to him, I can't tell if this is the Lord Commander of the King's Guard because we do not see a white cloak visible. It may be Sir Ryan Redwine, but it really doesn't look like Graham McTavish, who's playing Lord Commander Westerling. So let me know in the comments who you think this might be. Anyways, next to them, we have Lord Corlys Velaryon. And lastly, Princess Rhaenys Targaryen. This is in Harrenhal. We see King Jaehaerys on a very ornate throne. Not sure if, it's, if this is for the special occasion or if this is owned by House Strong, House Strong that lives in Harrenhal. Next up, we have a photo of young Alicent and Rhaenyra. Alicent is reading a book. She used to read to the old king back when he was alive. They are also walking through the godswood at the Red Keep, as you can see a weirwood tree in the background. Then we have two photos from what I assume to be the same tourney. During Viserys the First Reign, there were several tourneys, so I believe they will combine a few of them. However, this one in particular, I believe is going to be the introduction of Sir Kristen Cole. As we can see, Sir Kristen Cole with the Morning Star versus Prince Damon. We saw a clip of this in an earlier teaser. In the same tourney, we had this close-up shot of Prince Damon with a lance. Assuming this is from a jousting match, I want to point out how much I love his winged helm and all of the dragon details in his armor. This next shot is also a continuation of earlier footage we have seen of Princess Rhaenyra's investiture as the Princess of Dragonstone. We see behind her on the Iron Throne is King Viserys. Continuing with the extended scenes, we get this shot of Prince Damon with some smudge on his face holding a dragon egg. I believe this takes place after he runs into the dragon at the end of the previous trailer. I think this is one of the wild dragons setting up for the dragon seeds that we'll see in later seasons. This is the same egg we see him holding with Masaria in the trailer. Masaria is pregnant with his child at this time, and he plans on gifting their unborn kid the egg, as was tradition for Targaryens. We have a new image here of Lord Corlys and Princess Rhaenys. I think this is after one of their children's funerals due to them wearing black. And for the Great Council, we see them in bright colors, as well as the wedding scene, they're also in rich jewel tone colors. So that's what makes me assume this is more than likely a funeral. Lastly, the final still, which I want to say, boy, is this image loaded with the reveals and also proof of me being right, which is not a real humble brag, but it feels good to spot certain things and have a prediction be correct. So let's get into this. This is a continuation of the clip we see of Alicent running up on someone with the cat spa dagger. We see a distressed Alicent being held back by Rhaenyra. However, my attention really isn't on them, it's on the people behind them. 
we have our first official look at Prince Aegon and Prince Aemond. I don't think the person in the middle is Helena based on the hair color. But actor Tom Glenn Carney was confirmed to play Prince Aegon and this definitely looks like him. And to the right of him, we see Prince Aegon aemon with a missing eye and blood dripping from the socket if you're wondering what i meant by being right please see this lovely clip from the usual suspects in direwolf city stream covering the first teaser trailer release i actually yeah. think that this is when um after aemon gets his eye taken out by mm. um what you want to call it rainera's sons because she says like oh an eye for an eye so I could see her trying to run up and like try to like take that little boy's eye out, and then they're like, "All right, chill the fuck out, get out of here." <laughs> Honestly, I, I think know. she's. Right. Speaking of Direwolf City, I know a lot of you have been asking, and I can happily say we will be covering the show and resuming streams very shortly. However, we are moving to a new home, the official Direwolf City YouTube channel. There's a link in the description below, so please subscribe to that and get notified for when we are streaming and we will be updating it to add some of our previous streams for you all to enjoy back to the updates we got some cast shots we have this group photo of king viserys princess rhaenyra and prince daemon if you're not too familiar we have two factions in the dance known as the blacks and the greens so on team black we have princess rhaenyra prince daemon Princess Rhaenys, and Lord Corlys Velaryon. We also have the shot of both Princess Rhaenys and Lord Corlys together, which I personally love. Next on the greens, there are more people included, but for now, these are the only photos we really have. So the heads of the house are Sir Otto Hightower and his daughter, Queen Alison Hightower. We also get these individual shots of them as well. As we could see, Alicent is rocking her green dress, which is how the faction gets its name. I will say the costuming for this series is exquisite so far. And you can tell the wardrobe team put a lot of effort into it. I will say they should hire Tokyo Styles or Arrogant Tay to lay some of these wigs, but you know what? We'll just move on and talk about positive stuff. So now to the second half of this video. The updates that I'm most excited about that were revealed in the articles and interviews. Alicent and Rhaenyra's relationship is going to look vastly different from what it did in Fire and Blood. I feel like it would be best to directly quote the article rather than paraphrasing it. So in the Entertainment Weekly interview by Nick Romano, we learn, Though the Targaryens and their dragons are in the title, House of the Dragon is truly anchored by Rhaenyra and Alicent, who will first see in the that honeymoon glow of friendship before their adult lives become consumed with the titular fire and blood they are central female characters who are at once credited and also blamed with this particular war condal says because the history is written by men we were really interested in the dynamic forces that a certain medieval level of innate chauvinism puts on the two women alicent grew up in the red keep as a daughter of the hand of the king Otto Hightower, with virtually no life outside of King's Landing. She forms a fast and immediate bond with Rhaenyra. Both Carrie and Cook feel Alicent is misunderstood based on how she's written in Fire and Blood. But that's by design. Martin's book is less of a literary narrative and more of a historical document, penned by Archmaester Gildane, who often describes events through the dueling perspectives of those who claim to know what happened. It makes separating truth from fiction in this fictional world puzzling. There's a preconceived notion that she always scheming, says Carrie. And you can understand why, says Cook. The woman whispering into a powerful man's ear has never been positively written about. So the fun was trying to find the nuance. But even those who have read Fire and Blood only have the general timeline of events. It's not the whole story. Speaking of Fire and Blood, in their interview with some of the cast, we learned that majority of them have not read Fire and Blood. Some have skimmed certain parts, but on the whole have not read it. In Game of Thrones, a lot of the cast also did not read the books. And for the most part, it did not negatively impact 
all of their performances. With this series not being written in a POV format like A Song of Ice and Fire, I do not think it's going to have a negative impact on their performances, mostly because Ryan Condal and Miguel Sapochnik, the showrunners, have read it and are working closely with George R.R. Martin. To me, they're the people I'm mostly concerned with knowing the material. We can expect dragons and more dragons. We learned from Eve Bess, who portrays Princess Rainies, and Matt Smith, who portrays Damon, more on the bonds between the dragons and their riders. We did see in Game of Thrones that Daenerys and Drogon shared a special bond where they were almost like extensions of each other. I figured it would be best to hear it from them directly. Rhaenys' dragon is called Melis, and they are very, very close. Almost like uh, Melis is a part of Rhaenys, and Rhaenys is a part of Melis. They're very, very attached. I think kind of Damon and um, Damon and Craxes are sort of one entity, really. They're one spirit. They're sort of avatars of one another. They're both just grumpy and moody. Mm. So I do think there's an apt, there's a kind of weird symbiotic sort of molecular thing that goes on. Finally, the thing I am most excited about with this series is representation. If you do not know by now, I am a biracial woman that is of Afro-Latina in white descent. I have been a fan of fantasy since I was a child, and I have yet to see anyone like me in a series that I enjoy up until now, with Lena and Lenor being the first biracial children and their parents in an interracial relationship. Seeing my personal favorite character in the world of Ice and Fire lore, the Sea Snake, being portrayed by a black man is a major winning point for me. I feel it would be best to leave the rest of why this is so monumental to Ryan Condal from the Entertainment Weekly interview with Nick Romano. The world is very different now than it was 10 years ago when Game of Thrones all started. It's different than 20 years ago when Peter Jackson made The Lord of the Rings. These types of stories need to be more inclusive than they traditionally have been. It was very important for Miguel and I to create a show that was not another bunch of white people on the screen, just to put it very bluntly. Long, long ago, when he was conceiving of this world, Martin, himself had considered the idea of making Valerians, a race of black people with silver hair that essentially came from the other side of the ocean and conquered Westeros, he says. That's a fascinating idea and that always really struck me with, struck, stuck with me because it's such a stark image. I just thought, well, why couldn't we do a version of that now? Both Kondal and Sapochnik felt strongly about featuring a person of color in a powerful position of nobility in the context of the story. In House of the Dragon, that would be Lord Corlys. Condal explains, They didn't want to do it in a way that felt like it was an afterthought, or worse, tokenism. They also wanted to avoid the recurring image of people of color showing up in fantasy sagas as pirates, slaves, and mercenaries. It's not any of that at all, Condal says. I've seen people that look like myself on screen in these type of high fantasy stories since I was born because I'm a white guy. What's it like for everybody else? We went back and just looked at the story and said, how do we do this in a way that can feel like it's done integrally with the story? If you have read Fire and Blood and know that we have echoes to the plotline from Game of Thrones surrounding royal paternity, I believe this take on it will make it even more apparent than it is in Fire and Blood. I don't want to get too specific for those that have yet to read the series. Well, that about wraps it up for the latest news and updates for House of the Dragon. I cannot wait to see this show on August 21st when it debuts. In the meantime, don't forget to check out the new Direwolf City YouTube page linked below and catch our live streams and after shows there. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for when we go live. Also, don't forget to do that here as well for more coverage. See you next time. Bye.